story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was Tuesday, December 21st. We were working the night watch out of traffic division, hit and run felony detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Calfee, Commander AID. My name's Friday. An elderly woman and her nine-year-old grandson had been struck down by a speeding truck. The woman was killed instantly. The hit-and-run driver escaped. We had to find him. We'd like to talk to you for a minute if we could. Well, fine. Would you like to step inside? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. One of the officers in the traffic car, ma'am, told us you were one of the people who saw the accident. Yes, that's right. Terrible thing. It was an old lady and her grandson, you know. Yes, ma'am. There's a few questions we'd like to ask you. It won't take us very long here. Did anybody get the license number, do you know, officer? I, I mean, on that truck that ran them down? No, not that we know of. We understand the officers in the traffic car talked to you. You didn't see the number either, huh? No, I'm sorry I didn't. The whole thing happened so fast. It was all over before I knew what was going on. I saw the old lady and the little boy start to cross the street, then... All of a sudden, this truck seemed to come right out of nowhere. Ran them down, kept right on going. Were the woman and the little boy crossing with the lights, did you notice? Well, yes, they did. They were crossing with the green light. I remember because they stood on the curb a minute and waited for the light to turn green. Terrible thing. That truck deliberately went through that red light. Didn't even slow down. Uh-huh. Did you happen to get a look at the driver, ma'am? Well, I could see it was a man driving the truck, but it went by so fast, I just got a flash. I couldn't tell you what the man looked like, haven't any idea. About this truck that ran them down, do you think you'd know it if you ever saw it again? Well, I'm not sure. I, I think I might, yes. It was one of those delivery trucks, you know. I, I think you call it a panel truck. It was a light tan color all over, and there was black lettering on the side. Mm -hmm. Could you make out any of the lettering at all? Well, I think there were three or four words painted on the side, and I know one of them was bakery. I'm sure of that. Well, did you recognize what make a truck it was, ma'am, the year or the model? Well, it was a late model. I'm pretty sure of that. I think it was a Ford, one of those regular delivery trucks like some bakeries use. Anything else out of the ordinary you might have noticed about the truck, ma'am? Anything outstanding that might have caught your eye? Oh, I'm sorry, officer. That's about all I can tell you. How's the old lady, do you know, and the little boy? Could they tell anything? No, ma'am. The woman's dead. She was killed instantly. They've taken the youngster to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. Afraid he's in pretty bad shape, too. How could anybody do such a thing? There just isn't any excuse for it. No excuse in the world. It was downright murder. Well, maybe that explains it. What? That's why he kept going. Eleven thirty-five p.m. Frank and I finished interviewing the cashier in the theater box office, and then we called the office and had them get out a supplementary broadcast and an APB on the description of the hit-and-run vehicle. We went back across the street to the scene of the accident, where the officers in the T car, along with the crew from the crime lab, were finishing up their preliminary investigation. We interviewed two more witnesses to the hit-and-run accident, but they were unable to tell us anything that we didn't already know. When we got back to the office, we put in a call to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital, where they told us that the nine-year-old boy struck down by the hit-and-run driver was still in critical condition. The husband of the 64-year-old woman who'd been killed instantly was brought downtown to the morgue, where he identified the body. The next morning, we got out a special bulletin to all garages, auto repair, and paint shops throughout the city to be on the lookout for a late model tan panel truck, black lettering on the sides, with damage to the front end. 8.30 a.m. Frank checked with communications. It was Doc Hall at Georgia Street. I asked him about the boy. The old lady's grandson? How's he doing? Pretty much the same. Condition critical. That's all I'll tell you. That's a lousy shame. Communications getting any kickback on that all points yet? No, nothing. Did you get in touch with the crime lab? Yeah. They're not going to be able to help much, though. What would they find out there? Anything at all? Oh, just what we saw. A few small pieces of glass, probably from one of the headlights of the truck. They don't think they're going to be able to do much with them, though. Not enough to go on. And that's the only physical evidence they got, huh? That's all. Might be able to tie it down a little tighter if we could find that panel. Yeah. Did you start checking on that bakery truck angle yet? Yeah, McGowan and I called every bakery in town. Got it pretty well narrowed down. There are only two companies that use tan late model panels for delivery trucks. Yeah. Only one of them uses black lettering on the sides of the trucks. Other companies says they use red lettering. Which one has the black? Well, I got it right here. The Nielsen Wholesale Bakery. 
They got a fleet of 173 trucks, all the same. Tan color, black lettering on both sides, late model Ford delivery trucks. Mm -hmm. They tell you whether or not any of their drivers could have been making deliveries at that time of night, 10, 30, 11 o'clock? Yeah, there are about a dozen of them out on deliveries. More of them to account for than that, though. How do you mean? Well, all their drivers are allowed to take the trucks home with them when they're off duty if they want to. I'm afraid it's going to mean checking out every one of them, Joe. Well, we might as well get moving on it. Are they going to give us some kind of a list to work with? Yeah, got it all set up with them. I'll get it. Accident investigation, Smith. Oh, yeah, Don. He did, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks for calling. Yeah, Doc. It's a rotten deal. Why, what's the matter? The young kid, the grandson. Yeah. Just died. Many times and on many different occasions, the police officer has it proved to him that there can be very little difference between a crime of neglect and a crime that's been willfully premeditated. If you look at it closely enough, you can judge it for yourself. How much difference, for example, as far as moral guilt is concerned, is there between the following? Number one, a man who plans a killing, takes up a gun, finds his victim and shoots him to death. Or number two, the man who thinks he has to look out for no one's welfare but his own, gets behind the wheel of a car, disregards the ordinary rules of safety, and proceeds to commit homicide with a motor vehicle. Oftentimes, the crime masquerades under the guise of an accident. Morally, no matter how you spell it, it adds up to murder just as surely as if the person had taken a gun and shot his victim down. The way it looked to us, the hit-and-run killing of the elderly woman and her grandson was a prime example. Wednesday, December 